Okay, now we're going to introduce the idea of modeling to you. So, overall, in this course, we want to teach you how to conduct OR studies or how to use OR techniques to solve、um, business or decision making problems. So, if we want to do that, typically we need to go through a so called five step process. So, let me introduce these five steps to you and、uh, With that, to give you an idea about modeling. So, of course, the first thing is that we need to define the problem and collect relevant data. So, that's for us to understand the problem. And then, one key step is to formulate a mathematical model to represent the problem. Here, the key word is the mathematical model. This is typically something that can distinguish an OR study. With some other kind of studies, because in OR you need to have a mathematical model, and in other kind of studies, probably you don't need that. Once we have a model, we will try to apply some procedure to solve it and get a solution. We call it solving the model, and then try to see, try to look at the solution and the model to see whether the outcome is good enough. If that's not the case, maybe we need to reformulate another model and solve it again, or we need to define another solution process. After we are satisfied with our model and solution, we will eventually use that solution, that math mathematical outcome, to get some interpretations of our problem and some implications about our decision making. So. The important thing here is to introduce the concept of mathematical model to you. Okay, so as I mentioned, the main weapon that we have or we want to teach you is the so-called mathematical modeling. And when we say a mathematical model, typically we say it is a model of formulation or a program in the field of operations research. Modeling can be defined as following: basically, it's a way of abstracting a physical problem, abstracting a real problem into a model with symbols and formulas. So you will see equations, you will see、um, formulas, and you will see that a real problem should be and can be defined as mathematical symbols and formulas in the field of operations research. So you probably want to ask, why do we want to use mathematics to formulate or to model a problem? There are at least two reasons. First, when we use only words to describe a problem, it may be imprecise. If I write an article or write a paragraph to show you one problem, different people may have different interpretations, and our definition of problems may be different. But if we are using a mathematical model, then everything will be precise, and at the same time, typically the description can be much shorter, and the things will be more concise. Another thing is that once we have a model, then typically we design a method or an algorithm to solve that model, and if multiple problems can be formulated as one kind of model. Then one method for that model can be applied to all the problems. This is very important, and this is why OR is especially popular in business, because in the business world, no company would face the same problem, right? But they always face similar problems. For example, two different retail stores may need to make their orders about their products. They need to decide the inventory levels. They are facing different customers. They are facing different suppliers, and their products are different. So their problems must be different. But if we can formulate their problems and see that oh, they have similarities, and if that single model can be solved by one algorithm, then that algorithm can be powerful and valuable because once you know it, you can apply it to many different situations. Okay, so that's why we need mathematical modeling. Okay, so 
I'm going to give you one very simple example to show you what we mean by mathematical modeling. So consider the following example. Suppose I have three used textbooks and I want to sell them in the second-hand market. I need to bring them to the market, of course, but I am too weak and I can carry at most five kilograms. Okay. So my question now would be which books should I bring? I want to know some properties about the books and then decide what should I do. So this is a decision problem. Okay? This is a decision problem and I'm going to formulate it, solve it and go through the five steps of the OR uh, study. So step one, I need to define a problem uh, like this and collect relevant data. So I need to define the problem in a way that I need to decide what's my objective. Okay, so I want to earn as much money as possible without hurting myself. So the amount of books I carry, the, the, the total weight cannot be larger than 5 kilograms. And within that constraint, I want to maximize the amount of money I can earn. That's the problem I define. And then I collect relevant data. I have three textbooks, calculus, computer programming, and the operations research. And I know if I bring them to the market, I can sell them at these prices, but they have different weights. So I need to decide which one or which two or which three books that I can carry. If I can carry all of them, of course I will do that, but unfortunately I cannot. So I need to decide which books to carry. Okay, that's the problem. Of course, the problem is very simple, but this is just one illustration. You may imagine that if you have mm, 100 books, then the problem gets complicated and probably cannot be solved easily, right? So this is just one example. Then is our step two. We want to formulate, that means describe the problem in the mathematical terms. So basically, here are four things that you will see throughout this semester. To define a problem or to formulate a problem, tell us what are the parameters, decision variables, objective function, and the constraints. Okay? Parameters are those values or those numbers that we cannot control, that are given to us. And the decision variables are those things that we want to decide or we want to control. Objective function is the thing that we want to do, to maximize our revenue, for example. And then constraints are the limitations on our decisions. So let's go through them one by one. In this problem, we have the following parameters. We have, in total, a capacity of 5 kilograms. That's the maximum amount of weight that I can carry. I have three books in total. For the three books, I have $500, $400, and $200. That's the selling price of them. And I have 4 kilograms, 2 kilograms, and 3 kilograms. That's the weight of them. That's the parameters I have. And then, I need to define my decision variables. In general, there can be multiple different ways to define different decision variables. And they may, both, they may all be correct. But sometimes, someone is better than the other. We will go through the, 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 the issue in this course. But anyway, one thing that I can do here is that I know I want to decide whether I want to bring that book to the market or not for each book. Okay, so how about this? I'm going to define xi as my decision variable. Okay, so this is a variable and i from 1 to 3. So I define three variables. xi is 1 if I choose to carry book i and the xi is 0 if I choose don't do that. So that's my decision variable. For each book, I decide whether to bring it or not. If I do that, I set xi to be 1, otherwise xi should be 0. The reason that I need these variables is because I want to precisely describe my constraints and objective functions. So what's my objective function? I want to maximize the sales revenue and with my decision variables, that's simple. That's just this one, right? 
if I carry x one, if I carry book one, then x one would be one, and I can earn five hundred dollars. If I do not take book two, then x two would be zero, and I cannot collect these four hundred dollars, and so on. So given the values of my decision variables, this expression is exactly my objective function. Exactly, I want to maximize this sum. Okay, so that's my sales revenue. And what what kind of constraints do I have? Is that I am not strong enough, right? So we can see, the left hand side of this inequality is that the is the total amount of weights that I carry, given my decision. If I carry book one, then I need to put four kilograms of weight into my backpack. Book two. Is lighter, so it's just two kilograms. So the left hand side is the sum of the total weights, and then the right hand side is my capability. So the amount I carry cannot be higher than the amount that I can carry. That's my constraint. So our first model or formulation for this problem is the following: I want to maximize this amount, my sales revenue. Subject to a constraint that the amount I carry is no greater than the amount I can carry. Okay, so this is a model for our problem. No one says it's the best model or the correct model, and so on, or something like that. But this is a proposed model. Later, we will try to solve the problem and see whether the model is good or not. Thank you.